People often ask me, what inspired you to start these videos? It was after years of sitting in one Jummah Khutbah after another and hearing the same topics recycled over and over and over and over again. While at the same time wondering why so many topics went under the radar. For all the khatibs who watch this show, the Ummah is sleeping. Some of them are literally sleeping at Jummah. Knocked out. I mean two rounds with Mike Tyson during his prime knocked out, snoring away. Yeah, like that. They basically wake up for two occasions. One is when someone stands up and says, please uh, move forward, we need to make room for the people who are late for Jummah. And a lot of people are late for Jummah. And two, when it's time for Salah. <sighs> Joke! Ever since these videos started to get popular, I started getting invited to events to go speak and perform. And I can only imagine, as a speaker, what it would be like if I lost the attention of my audience, let alone if their eyes are closed and their heads are down. And as a speaker, you see these things. So sometimes you wonder, does the Khatib see what we're seeing? I know they're seeing what we're seeing. People are sleeping. I mean, if you haven't noticed, the guy to my left and the guy to my right are catching their Z's while you're talking. And this is Jumma, and we're in the middle of the day. And if you notice these people who are sleeping, they're not even leaning on anything. They're sleeping sitting straight up. And you've only been talking for seven minutes. Seven minutes. The very fact that people are getting their power naps during Jumma is saying something. And that something is the khutbah is boring. Boring. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Islam is boring. In fact, Islam is very interesting. The problem is the person often given the khutbah either has poor communication skills or is talking about something that's not relative to the audience, which makes it very difficult to concentrate. The other week at Jummah, the khatib told us, if you see a dead goat on the side of the road, don't eat it. <laughs> what? I'm thinking to myself, bro, we live in Los Angeles, there's no dead goats. The only goats we have is at the petting zoo. And they're alive. <laughs> Come on people, out of the hundreds of topics, this is what we're going to talk about? Joke! Joke! I mean, how many times have we heard a khutbah about wudu? I mean seriously, in about 15 minutes, we're going to start praying. So if you don't know how to make wudu, you're going to be in trouble. And then in these khutbahs, they're very difficult to listen to. Specifically, the reading khutbah. You know, as when someone prints out a khutbah and decides to read it, oftentimes they don't even seem interested in the khutbah they're reading. Assalamu alaikum brothers, in Islam, communication is very important. And the way we communicate to each other can make a very big difference in... Wait, the, the way we communicate can make a very big difference. But the toughest khutbahs for me to listen to are the ones which don't seem to have a point. My dear respected brothers and sisters, you know, Muslims, we must be good, not bad. Huh? And because being bad is not good, and being yourself is like being human, because we are all human beings, and human beings are different than jinn. Huh? Aqeem Salah. I'm thinking to myself, what? I mean, how relative is this topic? It doesn't happen. No, seriously, it doesn't happen. Whoa! Is that a dead coat? Bro, do we got a dead coat? Put it in the trunk, because we got dinner tonight, bro. We got dinner. No, it doesn't happen. Honestly, I have to admit, sometimes I myself fight to stay awake during Juma. Anyways, for years I've been sitting in Jummah, and I wish I could say something. But since you're not supposed to talk during the khutbah, I haven't said anything. And since I didn't want the khatib to take it personal, I wasn't sure how to confront him. 
I realized the problem wasn't local, it was global. And for many people, Juma was becoming more of a ritual than a religious act. I couldn't hold it inside anymore. I felt like I had to say something. So I got a camera, sat in a chair, pressed the record button, and started talking about the many things that I wasn't hearing in Juma. At first, I had no idea if anyone was going to watch these videos. But in a short amount of time, a few thousand became a few hundred thousand, and now we have a few million video views. Actually, over five million video views. And this is not because I'm a great speaker or anything like that. Actually, there's so many people that are far more knowledgeable than me. But what I try to do different is to communicate in a way that people would listen. And at the same time, talk about the issues that was relative to them. And for all the khatibs who are watching, and on behalf of all my Muslim brothers and sisters, please talk about issues that are relative to us. You see, most of us have heard the cycle of topics of Ramadan, Dhikr, Salah, Budu, Hajj, Ramadan, Dhikr, Salah, Budu, Hajj, and we are ready to move on to the many issues that are being ignored. Most of these issues are very limited because they're just between you and your creator or you and yourself. But what about the issues that deal with you and other people? Those are the things we really need to talk about. I have some suggestions to spice up Juma a little bit. It's for my little list that I call, <laughs> you won't hear that at Juma. If I got a dog for each time someone came late to Juma, spoke during Juma, and then was even wearing clean clothes to Juma, Man, I'll be rich! <laughs> rich! And what about the Salaam brothers who come to Juma? You know who the Salaam people are? Who will go around saying, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum to everybody during Juma? Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Sound like Or better yet, what about the people who do everything at Juma except listen to the khutbah? Other than the sleepers, you have whispering, saying text messages, people making phone calls, answering phone calls. Some people even reading. There's no reading during the khutbah. So my suggestion is the topic, the etiquettes of Juma. But that's unlikely because <laughs> you won't hear that at Juma. Most of the people who come to Juma are usually men who work or men who deal with some type of business. When it comes to dealing with non-Muslims, brothers seem to be very professional and pay everything on time. But when it comes to our Muslim brothers, it's kind of like, oh brother, we'll pay you one day. You're either going to overcharge the guy or underpay him. Joke! So how about a khutbah about the business practices in Islam? Actually, that might be very relevant and that sounds like a great idea, but... <laughs> you won't hear that, Ajumma. Okay, so most people are married or they're going to get married. So there's a lot of important stuff they need to know. So how can we never talk about the issues about like what Islam says about sex and what is allowed, what is not allowed? I mean, these people can get married. <laughs> he said sex. Sex. <laughs> yes, I said sex. How do you think you came into this world? You think you, like your parents just picked you up from a hospital? Um, um. I like that one right there. That looks like me. <laughs> We'll take this one, please. No, they didn't. You see, Islam is a complete way of life. From the way we eat, to the way we go to the bathroom, to even what happens in the bedroom. Guys, so what about a topic about Islam and intimacy? And what Islam allows and doesn't allow and all that kind of stuff. You know, I think you're onto something. That's definitely a, a very important issue, but you won't hear that, Ajumma. Oftentimes we hear about being good to your neighbors and some of the rights your neighbors have upon you. But what are those rights? You see, most of us don't know. So how about a topic about rights of neighbors? You know what, that's actually a pretty good idea, but... <laughs> you won't hear that, Ajumma. Actually, there's so many different topics. How about a khutbah about how converts are treated before their shahada and after their shahada? <laughs> you won't hear that, Ajumma. How about just one khutbah about adab? <laughs> you won't hear that, Ajumma. The rights of children in Islam. <laughs> you won't hear that, Ajumma. And the list goes on and on and on. Many people who watch these videos are people who give khutbahs. So why not let's try to get these videos out to them. And what I mean is, what we'll do is we'll post these videos on websites, blogs, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Maybe inshallah, with, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, it will reach the eyes and the ears and maybe even the hearts of those who have the microphone during Juma. I know I'm not alone when I say I want what's best for this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your efforts and I hope we all can get some hasanat out of this inshallah. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. Ha -ha.
Do you want to know what makes love grow? What makes love grow? It's half of your deen, said the prophet, peace be on him. Half of your deen, it's part of Islam, increasing your iman. Half of our deen, half our deen.com.